I was dating a guy who rode, and at that point I was about 58, and uh, he said I'd be a natural, and uh, I had another buddy who um, rode, and I'd go ride with him after Chuck and I quit dating. We're still friends, but we weren't dating. And he said the same thing, so I snuck off and took the course. And um, and the the buddy knew of a bike. No, the ex-boyfriend knew of a bike, and the buddy could had a trailer and would test ride it and bring it home. <laughs> that was that was it. It was scary. <laughs> you know how the cowboys and Indians they say today's a good day to die. Is Why do you think you were so independent? When I was six years old, I was really sick, and they tell me I nearly died. And uh, from then on, anything I wanted to do, Mom would say, you can't do that, you can't do that. Well, it wasn't especially that you didn't have permission. She's afraid I get sick again. And my reaction was, oh, yeah, I'll show you. <laughs> so um, so it's more she was saying I wasn't capable of it. Mm -hmm. And... Uh, so I just had this automatic reaction that, yeah, I can do it. I guess I'm not too surprised because she's always been um, a goal setter and she, as far as I know, has accomplished every goal she set out to accomplish and she's competitive and she focuses well, um, so I think it does kind of fit in with her uh, personality. She's happy doing it, she's living her passion. Um, and I know she's happy to have achieved such a big goal as far as her mileage and then all the, her contributions, because anything she does, she does like 200%. And as far as I can remember, she's always been like that. If she's interested in something, she really accomplishes a lot. Got married just before I left town, and our honeymoon was a trip to Fort Benning. Reg was a um, lieutenant in the Army. He got in his... Um, commission from University of Connecticut. And, uh, you know, nobody in my family, ancestors, had ever left town since mm -hmm. the 1600s or whatever. Um, and, of course, I missed it, but um, Reg was in for two years, and off we went. How do you think that changed you, uh, the, that, um, that lifestyle, traveling and, and uh, uprooting and, you know, waiting for your husband to come back from, from military service? Well, I probably was always independent, and that would make me more dependent. Funny story that connects with Ellsworth. I was at a woman's event at Fort Chaffee, Arkansas, and uh, this woman came up to me and asked if I was Muriel McGee, and I said, yeah. And she said something about she was Elaine, and it was Miss Cochione from high school. <laughs> and she'd married a military officer, and I wish I could remember her last name. 
Um, so it's like a, a small world. Mm. <laughs> but um, so we got together a few times while we were there. It's a great way to keep all the stuff down in your house because mm-hmm. you weed out before you move and you weed out when you move in. Mm-hmm. And you got to meet new people. Mm-hmm. Um, the military life, it was instant social life, mm-hmm. instant friends, and your neighbors became your family. What was that year like, the first year that he was in Vietnam? Well, it was scary. Um, There was a... um, What year was that? 67. Mm -hmm. And uh, there was a... The Red Cross had a Vietnam Wives Club, which really helped. Um, We met, I think, every other Wednesday, if I remember right. And, you know, civilian friends would say, oh, you poor thing, and, you know, and uh, all this stuff. And that's not what you wanted to hear. Mm -hmm. And other military wives were in the same boat. And it really helped to be with them. Mm -hmm. Um, We had fun. We laughed. Nobody's husband that I remember was wounded or killed. Um, But we were support for each other. Mm -hmm. And we spoke the same language. Mom, we weren't raised to worry about you. And I wasn't sure if that was a compliment or an insult. <laughs> and I think I followed up a few years later, and, and you know, it was supposed to be a compliment, I guess. Yes. When I first told them I got my license, the girls thought it was cool. And Dan said, what? You wouldn't let me even ride, uh, keep a motorcycle in your yard when I lived with you. And I said, yeah, yeah, I lived my life. You haven't. Mm-hmm. But um, I, I they, every once in a while, it sounds like, you know, they're impressed or something, yes, <laughs> I'm not yes, sure. Yes. It's starting to dawn on me that <laughs> some of what I've done is special. Mm-hmm. You know, you go out and you've done 30 miles and then you've done 50 miles and then you've done pretty soon it's a thousand miles Mm -hmm. and you go, New Hampshire doesn't count, it's just across the river. 
um, you get to New York and you made it alive, mm -hmm. and you get to Pennsylvania and you made it alive. Um, it just kept building. If you get a bike, save a good chunk of money out for good gear. And the BMW world, pretty much all agree, you always ride with all your gear. They call it at, at, all the gear all the time. Mm -hmm. And um, so you're, you're protected that way. Um, I don't like traffic. Um, I um, tend to ride on roads that there are very few cars on, if any. <laughs> And, um, but you're in the elements, um, you, you are in, you feel, you smell, you taste everything that's in there. You're so much more aware than in a car. Where do you go to the bathroom? You, 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 you know, you. <laughs> Every once in a while, behind a tree, but most of the time, <laughs> there are too many snakes in some parts mm -hmm. of the country and ticks, mm -hmm. and <laughs> um, you just. Uh, I stay. Depends. Spring and fall trips, I usually don't bring my tent. Um, I will bring a sleeping bag. I mooch off a friend sometimes, and you know, if they'll let me, I sleep in my sleeping bag rather than dirty their sheets. If I stay more mm -hmm. one night, it seems mm -hmm. a little better than <laughs> just for one night, you're gonna dirty all those sheets. Um, but uh, a campground or motel or- Is there no fear uh, <clears throat> for that kind of trip? No, not, I mean, the first time, yeah. I didn't mm -hmm. know if I'd ever get back. I remember the mm -hmm. first time I came back from a, a lengthy trip and saw the sign, Welcome to Vermont, it's, yeah, I made it. You know, wherever I go, I know somebody. Mm -hmm. The National Club, I spent nine years on the board with them. Um, it just, that you see these people at the rallies and, and mm -hmm. um, mm -hmm. I stay with some of them. Mm -hmm. They stay with me or whatever. Mm -hmm. It's a network that's, mm -hmm. uh, people, you speak the same language. Mm -hmm. I did stop at a restaurant, I um, can't remember the town, and the, I, won't, I just had my lunch and was fit, checking my email and all, and this woman popped around the corner and then popped back again, and you know, I, I don't take my stitch off my riding suit very often because it's, you know, I just eat there and, and leave. Mm -hmm. and. Uh, as I'm leaving, she, she said something about, oh, where are you from? And I said, Vermont, and oh my gosh, and, and uh, that's a long way. I said, well, I've been to the West Coast. This was, I think, in Indiana. And oh, she was excited. Well, she was the owner, I guess, along with her son. And then uh, he started asking questions, and somebody said, how old are you? And I said, well, almost 80. And then now everybody in the restaurant's asking me questions. Mm. And they're all really friendly and mm. all, they're mm. all helpful. And, and uh, but it's fun to interact with the people, and you can tell you're bringing joy to them. Mm -hmm. um, so it's, it's a two-way street there. I, I like meeting the local people.
Uh, things that come to mind are like Colorado National Monument near Grand Junction, Colorado, mm -hmm. for absolute beauty. Mm -hmm. And um, the Southwest, the Four Corners area. Um, I went to Canyon de Chez, um in Arizona and went down into the um, into the canyon with a native guide, and that was just amazing. Mm -hmm. um, and then I went to um, Chaco Culture in New Mexico, and I've got a picture somewhere of heading out. You go through 32 miles of desert um, with nobody out there. Mm -hmm. <laughs> And uh, but it was peaceful. It was really, really neat. And coming out was a challenge because it had rained a little, and that, that dirt turns to gumbo. And mm -hmm. <laughs> I can't pick up these bigger bikes by myself mm -hmm. anymore. So you don't want to go down. Mm -hmm. um, but the whole ancient cultures that uh, you know you get to experience mm -hmm. firsthand. It's just it's utterly amazing and it makes you angry that people called the Native Americans savages. Mm -hmm. They were a lot smarter than a lot of people today. Mm -hmm. uh, but the whole area around Moab, Capitol Reef is where? It's um, about 40 or so miles west of uh, Moab. Mm -hmm. And Moab is where? Utah. Utah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And uh, the whole country down there is so colorful and um, at a Capitol Reef, I learned how to take a picture. I had my camera around my neck and a ribbon, and I could just go like this because there are not a lot of places to mm -hmm. stop. Mm -hmm. And every corner was another beautiful mm -hmm. scene. What advice do you have for people who haven't really experienced the, our country? Oh, I, I mean, if you're at all curious, there's some places you want to see and, and you know, pick those. And um, I mean, places like Yellowstone, I guess you're supposed to, uh, I mean, most everybody wants to go to Yellowstone. I don't care if I ever go back there. Mm -hmm. The tourists drive you nuts. Mm -hmm. <laughs> they stop in the middle of the road without signaling. Mm -hmm. <laughs> um, even if uh, a grizz cub just went by and where's mama? <laughs> you can't roll up your windows on a motorcycle. Mm -hmm. Places you read about, um, probably in school and maybe National Geographic or whatever. It's really nice to see them. Um, I don't know, I just like, you know, I hear about roads to ride and and so if i'm in an area i'll make sure i ride those roads mm. and and then find my own mm -hmm. the gps is great at finding you new roads mm -hmm. sometimes <laughs> you wish they didn't but um <laughs> it's um taking the shortest way from where you are to your destination mm. can be very interesting mm. i cannot imagine anyone being a better representative and recipient of the friend of the mark over the past 20 years, your dedication to the sport has been nothing short of spectacular. To think that your journey on two wheels began just 21 years ago, and since then you have not only ridden 300,000 plus miles on BMW motorcycles, but you've also helped so many fellow members along the way.